This is the new Zion Crane M2S, and I'm excited to show you guys how this gimbal works, how it's different than its predecessors, and how I think that this gimbal is the best gimbal on the market at the price point that it's at. Right now, I have the Sony ZV-1 with the wide angle lens on it, the cage, and this gimbal is handling it just perfectly. But one of the most exciting things for me about this gimbal is not only can you power the camera from the gimbal, but you can also, can I get a drum roll? Is it going? Yeah, it's going. You can now control the record button from the gimbal and you don't have to go through the phone app. There's some settings that you have to work inside of your camera to get it to work like this and I'll show that to you later on in the video, but this is the gimbal that we're gonna cover today on the Film Alliance. Today we're going to use the Crane M2S with the ZV-1, the ZV-E10, and the A7 III. We're going to see how the stabilization looks and feels. We're going to see how the motors can handle heavier setups. And we're just going to get a general overall feel of how this gimbal works. Just like the Crane M3, if you're going to go with a bigger setup, don't go with the crazy long lens because that's going to mess with your balance. If you're interested in taking a look at the Crane M3 review video that I did, I'll leave that video in the description and I'll put it in the card. Which side does it go on? Left shoulder. Oh, okay, over here. I've had the Crane M2 for almost two years and I've used it with the ZV-1 on so many different shoots and I was really impressed with it. I guess the one complaint that I have is I couldn't really build out my ZV-1 that much because the motors just couldn't handle it. Now let's talk about what's in the box of the Crane M2S combo version. I forgot to mention that Zion sent me this gimbal so that I could test it out and let them know what I think about it and make a video of how this gimbal works. <laughs> comes with a nice white bag, which is way bigger than the actual gimbal itself, so you can put other gear inside of it. It has enough compartments for everything. So it came with a bunch of cables, and these are key to being able to activate the camera and work the camera through the gimbal. It has these little fill lights that you can put on the light of the gimbal. Nice strap, so you can strap the bag on your shoulders. A cell phone holder, and also these quick release plates, they sent me two of them so that I could put it on multiple cameras and switch cameras quickly between the gimbal and also a mini tripod for the bottom of the gimbal. I love how they sent me two of these quick release plates so I can add two different cameras at the same time. And I have three cameras that I'm using right now, so I set the Arca Swiss mount plate up with the ZV-1, but for the ZV-E10 and the A7 III, I'll use these quick release plates. Right now I'm balancing the ZV-E10 so that we can go get some cinematic shots and see how the footage looks. If you're interested in how I balance my cameras on these gimbals, I'll leave a link in the description. So it's super easy to balance. Joe, we don't care about how you balance the gimbal. We wanna know about the functions and how it works. Okay, okay, we're gonna to get to that. Let's start with the functions. In appearance, it has a customized color scheme. One I haven't seen before, but the body type does look like the Crane M2. Although the innards of the gimbal itself is different than the M2 and the arms are bigger and the grip is slightly larger. It has stronger motors, which means it can attach bigger cameras and more accessories to smaller cameras like the ZV-1. The grip that's on the front and the back helps with those of us who sweat a lot and we need a lot of grip so we don't have slippage when we're trying to hold onto the gimbal. The trigger button is used to reposition with the double press, have the camera flip to 180 with the triple press and go mode if you hold it down. The red slide on the side toggles to fill light on and off and you get four different light intensities. The USB-C port on the side is for charging and firmware upgrades. Moving to the other side, you have the power button and the menu button. Here's a pro tip. If you double press the menu button, it'll lock the joystick so that you won't inadvertently move the joystick with the camera on the gimbal. I've done that a ton with the Crane M2 and it was so frustrating, but now you can double press the menu button and the joystick just stays in place. The bottom has a quarter mount inch thread so that if you wanna just place your gimbal on a tripod, maybe you're doing some run and gun and you wanna throw it onto a tripod, you can do that. Otherwise, you can just put the miniature tripod on the bottom like that. Moving to the front of the joystick, it's pretty self-explanatory. The record button does one thing, it starts and stops the recording. And the end button switches between gimbal modes. I couldn't connect to the ZY app because I no longer have a smartphone. And also at the time of recording this video, they didn't have the gimbal updated inside of the app just yet. I went out and got some shots with these three cameras and we're gonna see how good the stabilization looks. I shot all of these in 24 frames per second. I didn't have active stabilization on inside of the cameras and I'm not gonna do any post-production stabilization work. So we're really gonna get a good idea of how stabilized this gimbal is when it comes to shooting video. We 
Okay, ready? For the camera like the A7 III, the screen only tilts out, so you really are kind of stuck with the way the screen is inside of the camera, but that's only with the A7 III. One complaint I had about the Crane M2 is I couldn't put very big setups on it. All I could really put on it was like a ZV-1 or maybe like a small APS-C camera with a small lens. But so far this gimbal is handling all types of different camera setups just perfectly. Now I'm going to show you how I set up the settings inside of the camera in order to be able to control the record button with the gimbal without having to reach all the way over the top to press the record button. And the first thing that you need is the little wire that came with the gimbal. And these wires have a little tag. You can see this tag right here. And that tag needs to be the side that hooks into the gimbal right there. So you have to make sure that that tag is hooked up. If it's the other way, then it doesn't work for some reason. So I make sure that the tag side of the wire is hooked into the gimbal. And then I take the other side and I hook it into the camera. So inside your menu, you just come over to network and you wanna turn the smartphone connect to off. And then you come down to PC remote function and you turn on PC remote and then also make sure that PC remote connect method is USB. And that's really all you need to do in order to power the camera while it's on the gimbal and also be able to control the record from the record button of the gimbal. Overall, I'm a huge fan of this gimbal. I think it has great motors. I haven't had any issues where I felt like the motors were bugging out and the camera was doing weird stuff. As long as you balance it correctly, then it should work out great. I actually liked that it was like the Crane M2 because I already had muscle memory with the Crane M2 as far as how the thing works and how it floats the camera through the air. So you guys be the judge and tell me how you feel the stabilization was with this gimbal. Like I said, I did not have any active stabilization inside of the camera on. And overall, I think the stabilization on it is great. The one thing that I love about gimbals is you can actually use these really high quality cameras and now get really stabilized footage without having to do any post-production type of work. Maybe you have to do a little bit, but if you can hold the gimbal steady enough, then you're gonna be set to go with your stabilized footage. It's always best to get it right in camera so that you don't have to fool around with post-production stuff afterwards. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Joe with the Film Alliance, and I will talk to you on the next one. Forgot to mention that the lens that I was using on the Sony a7 III was the 28 to 70 lens. It's pretty cheap on Amazon. It's a Sony lens, but it's not like a Prime or a G Master or anything like that. Uh, I think it's like 300 bucks, but that way you can look up the weight of it if you're interested to see how much weight I was carrying on this gimbal.